after I've got the homily, and then I'll call them up, and then they'll come up to the altar and everything, and we'll go down to the floor and start addressing them. Good now, Kevin, we have to readjust this yeah, one. Let's get that done. Okay. So when you finish your homily, yeah, I'll call them forward. They'll come up with their sponsors. Where's the other one? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mass on this fourth Sunday of Lent. Let us stand. En la casa durmiendo. Con ronquida. Sí, ronquida, pero hey, hey. Ok. Tengo muchas intenciones para llevar al Señor. Good morning. Good morning, Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. Many are the forms of blindness. If you've got a lot of dough to throw around, even if you can't see with your physical eyes, if you have a money-hungry ophthalmologist, they can make you very thick eyeglasses so you won't stumble around. But there are worse forms of blindness, and we see these, this all the time. Those who have all the evidence of God's presence and Christ's glory before them, and they see nothing. That's a terrible form of blindness. No matter how much dough you have to throw around, no matter how many money-hungry ophthalmologist you hire. 
if you do not see with the eyes of your spirit, aha, then, okay, you have need for radical conversion of life. Because without eyes in your heart, vision in your soul, you're helplessly blind. We praise and bless and thank Almighty God and ask him to grant to us at least to be minimally interested in being able to see the things of the Spirit clearly and cogently. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Almighty Father, who through your word made flesh, you reconciled the human race to yourself in a marvelous way. Lord God, grant, we pray, that with devotion and with eager faith, your Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebration of Easter. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. For I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty statue, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ready, youthful, handsome, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in his hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed to the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and may the Lord be in your heart and on your lips. May worthily proclaim this holy gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, 
this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said it is, but others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, what do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? He ridiculed him and said, you are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
In the beginning of St. John's Gospel, which is known as the prologue, he introduces the images of darkness and light. He is referring to Jesus when he says, through him was life, and this life was the light of the human race, the light that shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That image of Christ as the light is one of the themes of John's Gospel. Today's Gospel from John plays on that image of light and darkness in terms of blindness and sight. That theme is also shown to us in today's second reading from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where he also speaks about darkness and light. This wonderful gospel story about the man born blind can appear to be a simply a story about healing, but it is so much more than that. It also has some details that are different from the other healing miracles. The story starts with the disciples asking Jesus about the man's situation. They wanted to know why the man was blind. At this point, we don't know if the man had a clue that Jesus was even there. That is very different from most healing stories. Usually, someone came to Jesus seeking his help with some affliction, whatever it might be. Somehow, they were able to recognize that Jesus had power that could help them. But in this story, it unfolds very differently. The blind man in this story only seems to get involved when Jesus tells the disciples that the man was blind so that the works of God would be made visible. What kind of faith did the man have at this point? We don't really know. We don't get any indication that he had any faith, but apparently he was willing to go along with what Jesus was doing. So, as we hear in the Gospel, the man does what Jesus tells him to do. He washes in the pool of Siloam, and then he can see. By the way, there is a parallel between what happened to the man and our own sacrament of baptism. The man is anointed, he is washed clean, and faith starts to awaken in him. What he experienced that day led him to something greater than just physical sight. It opened his eyes to the reality of God. Getting back to the story, we see some rather pointed conversations involving the man, the Pharisees, and the man's parents. As those conversations unfold, we see the man starting to grow in his understanding of who Jesus is and what Jesus was capable of doing. He recognized that Jesus couldn't do the things he had done if he weren't from God. The man could see clearly what the Pharisees were still blind to. Later. After the man was thrown out, Jesus went and found him. He said to the man, Do you believe in the Son of Man? The man was now able to say, I do believe you. Then he worshipped Jesus. When he worshipped Jesus, he probably got down on his knees or he laid flat on the ground. I wonder what it was like for the disciples to witness that. Were they even at the point in their own faith where they could worship Jesus in that fashion. They might have been rather surprised about what they saw. Now let's take a look at a different aspect of this theme of darkness and light. Today's second reading from Ephesians is helpful here. In this passage, St. Paul is also addressing the Ephesians in terms of light and darkness. While Paul doesn't really go into detail about what he means by the works of darkness, we can only imagine what those things could be. Paul is encouraging his readers to do away with the things of darkness. He wants them to expose the things of darkness to the light so that they will no longer be as dangerous. There is the suggestion here that even as children of light, we can find that there is a constant tension between who we are called to be as Christians and the lure of darkness, which always seems to be creeping around. Paul was well aware that when those who walk in the light are not careful, they can be overcome by the darkness of sin. St. Paul seems to be concerned with what happens when we get lured into the things of darkness. He understood that when we allow that to happen, it is easier to allow ourselves to fall into those things again and again. That can cause us to become spiritually blind. 
St. Paul doesn't want us to go through life as people who are spiritually blind. He wants us to see clearly the things that are of God and to stay clear of the things of darkness. Paul would see the man in today's gospel as a man who has taken a pivotal turn in life. He is casting off the works of darkness and is clothing himself in the light of Jesus. What happened to this man is clearly a life-changing event that should have moved him to put his faith in Jesus for the rest of his life. Now we don't know the rest of this man's story, but we can hope that he became a disciple and followed Jesus after that. This story of the man's blindness in sight actually becomes a kind of parable where the man moves from no faith to a kind of infant faith and then to a more mature faith. The incredible paradox of this story is that those who cannot see are now able to see and understand with the eyes of faith. And those who claim they can see are still both spiritually blind and without faith. What does all of this say to us as Christians? Well, we should know that we as Christians are people of the light. But we should be able to admit that our light sometimes flickers or burns with less intensity at times. Lent reminds us of the precious gift that is ours through faith. It's a process of growth, step by step, as we learn how Jesus wants us to live, how to act, and how to love. Jesus is calling us to be light for the people we encounter. Some of the people we encounter are our catechumens and candidates, the elect of our parish. When we see them here as they prepare to join us in our faith, we should be reminded that we are all still learning what it means to be a follower of Jesus. None of us has arrived to where Jesus wants us to be in our faith. All of us are still a work in progress. When the man born blind experienced that powerful healing, he wasn't there yet either, but he was able to begin the journey. Let's remember that it's a journey we are all on. It all boils down to this. Jesus and St. Paul want us to live in the light of God and to be light for others. How do we do that? We start by being people of prayer. That means that we should be praying for each other on a regular basis. And we need to support each other on this journey to eternal life. When we do that, our light is shining brighter. And that is what Jesus asks of each of us. Amen. Will the elect please come forward with your sponsors? My dear friends, I ask you now to kneel and pray in silence and ask that the elect will be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and the true freedom of the children of God. Now we address you. My friends, elect of God, as a sign of your inner spirit of repentance, bow your heads and pray. Let us all stand. Let us pray for these elect 
whom God has called, that they may remain faithful to the Lord and boldly give witness to the words of eternal life. that God may dispel the darkness of life without Christ and be the light that shines in the hearts of our elect. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That he may gently lead them to Christ, the light of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elect may open their hearts to God and acknowledge him as the source of light and the witness of truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may heal them and preserve them from the unbelief of this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That saved by him who takes away the sin of the world, they may be freed from the contagion and forces of sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all of these special intentions of our parishioners written in our prayer intention book at the back of the church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, Father of mercy, you led the man born blind to the kingdom of light through the gift of faith in your Son. Lord God, free these elect from the false values that surround and blind them. Lord, set them firmly in your truth, children of the light forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Outstretch your hands over the whole group, and then we'll say this. Lord Jesus Christ, true light that enlightens the world, through your spirit of truth, free those who are enslaved by the father of lies, the devil. Lord, stir up the desire for good in these elect, whom you have chosen for your sacraments. Lord, let them rejoice in your light, that they may see. And like the man born blind, whose sight you restored, Lord God, let them prove to be strong, fearless witnesses to the faith. For you are Lord forever and ever. My dear friends, this community now sends you forth to reflect more deeply upon the word of God that we've troubled ourselves to proclaim this morning. Be assured of our loving support and prayers for you. We look forward to the day when you will share fully in the Lord's table. By that we mean receiving the body and blood of Christ in the celebration of his holy sacrifice. Go in peace, and may the Lord remain with you, not just for an hour, not just for a day, not just for a week, not just for a month, but always. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Say it. Thanks be to God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with Father, through him all things were made. 
for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father is Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism, the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Okay. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all. Lord God, we place before you with joy these offerings that bring eternal remedy, praying, Lord God, that we may both faithfully reverence them and present them to you as is fitting, for the salvation of our world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with yours. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, Father, our duty and salvation, always, everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by the mystery of your Son's incarnation, he has led the human race 
that walked about in darkness into the radiance of the faith. And Christ has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of baptism to make them your adopted children. Therefore, Lord God, all the creatures of earth and heaven sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels and saints, cry out, without them, we, without end we acclaim. I'll do three, can I? Holy, holy, holy Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are holy indeed. All you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, you give life to all things and make them holy. And Lord God, you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of this sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice, Lord God, may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Holy Spirit, graciously sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these holy mysteries. For on the night Jesus was betrayed at the Last Supper, Jesus himself took bread, and Father giving you thanks, Jesus said the blessing, and he broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the same way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and giving you thanks, Father, he said the blessing. And he gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, Lord God, as we celebrate this living memorial of the saving passion and death of your Son, his wondrous resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming among us, Father, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord God, look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death on the cross, you, Father, will to, to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the sacred body and blood of your Son, filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Father, may your Son make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with Saint John the Baptist, with the blessed apostles, with the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession, Father, in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. Lord God, may this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Father, be pleased to confirm in Christian faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, the Bishop of Rome, our Holy Father Francis, the diocesan Bishop Peter, their fellow bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Father in heaven, listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you've summoned here before you. In your great compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Lord God, grant kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon our world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Brothers and sisters in Christ, closely united to Jesus, our Savior, crucified and risen, with one voice, with gratitude and anticipation, the Lord who comes to us in his body and blood and holy communion, we pray to him, to our Father in heaven, that holy communion in the body and blood of your Son may have more than passing interest to us. And so we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our, our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us your peace in our day, that with the help of your divine mercy, Lord, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, awaiting the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant to us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. With a solemn bow, let us offer each other this sign of peace. Very solemn. And with you. And peace be with you guys. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Amen. Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death has brought life to the world. Deliver me by your holy body and blood from all my sins, from every evil. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Lord God, you enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illumine our hearts with your light, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and what is pleasing to your majesty. To love you in all sincerity, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. Our parish's Lady Guild is sponsoring the Easter extravaganza, which they are calling the Bunny Trail. This will happen on Saturday, March 27th, from 1 to 3 in the afternoon. There will be staggered entry times for families, so there might be a bit of a line. This is for children nine years and younger. Children will explore in small family groups, and parents are welcome to follow along as they hike the Bunny Trail for Easter fun, prizes, and eggs galore. Come and join the fun. Masks will be required for anyone older than four, and there will be limit, this will be a li limited hands-on experience except for each child's prizes. We invite you to walk the way of the cross, as Jesus and Mary once did. According to tradition, after Jesus' death, Mary would make a daily pilgrimage to the places of Jesus' sufferings, death, and resurrection. When we pray the Stations of the Cross, we visit these 14 places. Join us at 7 p.m. on Friday, or after the 7 p.m. Spanish Mass on Saturday, and walk the way of the cross with Mary and Jesus. A week from today, there will be Mass in Vietnamese for the Lenten season. Father Pham will be here that afternoon to hear confessions about 12.15. Mass will follow at 12.45. That's a week from today on the 21st. The parish has, a system of a play, has in place a system to communicate with all the parishioners by email and or text. You should be getting emails or texts from the parish as we update on mass times, any other thing that the parish needs to know. If you are not getting those messages, there's a piece of paper out in the vestibule with how you can contact us to correct that information and make sure your information is correct so we can get you all that important information. Please do that if you're not getting those messages. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Um, what a wonderful parish. Help for the cripples. <laughs> there you go. Uh, your pulse tells me you have heart trouble. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's what you get for helping the cripples. <laughs> this electronic equipment. Yeah. Just leave it on the counter back there. Yeah. Next to myself. <laughs> I put myself on the counter.